art and science have been unnaturally separated in education and in our culture for a long time, but not forever. It's really, in some ways in the West, you could say it's really a post-Renaissance um, thing. It's not, it doesn't go, and even then, if we look at that period, a painter in, in, in those times would likely have made his or her own paints uh, in a highly scientific process. The idea of um, separating art and science is, is a, is a f fairly new idea, and even in modern times, if you look at, say, Einstein saying that imagination is more important than, than information, um, the crossover is there all the time. But we have been through a period where the two are separated significantly in education, but also in, in funding and in, in politically in our culture. Uh, I, I actually think we're coming out of that period. I think that period is pretty much closing. Um, it won't be practical to think that way anymore. The simple, unthreatening way to look at this, in my view, is that science, art, those are labels for, for results. But creativity is a process before it's a product. So when we're being creative, it can be directed towards what we might label as an art outcome. It can be directed towards what we might label as a science outcome or a technology outcome or a farming outcome or you know whatever outcome that we want to direct it towards. But there's only the, the creativity is a singular human capacity that can be used in multiple, maybe infinite ways. There is no you can't look take an MRI picture of someone's brain and say they're an artist and someone else's brain and say they're a scientist. And of course there I'm poking a little bit at these, these polarizations that we know now to be, to, to be foolish, like left brain, right brain, these deterministic ideas that someone's just inherently artistic or inherently scientific. Uh, there's just no uh, good science to support that anymore, though we know that um, people come in a full range of inclinations and some things are much harder for one person than they are for another person. But education, uh, it's hard to know in this world why you would spend money on educating someone if you thought they were already predetermined as to how they were going to be able to function. So it seems that if we are going to spend money on education, then we must believe that people are capable of being lots of different things and doing lots of different things, and that the source of that is something that's, that's ubiquitous in human beings, which is, in my view, our inclination to be creative.